We bring a message from our chief, Manewa. This ground on which you stand is Cherokee land. He wants no violence. But your people will leave this place, or there'll be trouble between us. I'll take this message back to your chief. Tell him I'll not be frightened off my land by the threats of any savage. And if it's trouble he wants, the clan Macintosh will give him plenty. Now be gone, all of you. It's ready, Roderick. Stand from under. Come here, lad. It won't be long now, lad. Till the cabins are built and your mother and sisters will be here from Salem. Next week, Grandfather? A wee bit longer, lad, but soon. There will be no violence. find out. Israel! Israel! Israel Boone, what are you up to? Just, just got something. What have you got there, young man? Pepper? We need it for cooking. We? Mona Luth and me. Mona Luth, the Chief Manewa's son? Yes, and we're friends. Yes, dear, I know. Uh, just where are you doing this cooking of yours? At the peace tree. Why there? You're an old girl. You wouldn't understand. I'm also your mother, and I might. Well, because Mona Luth thinks it's a good place to make medicine. You know. The Cherokee and the settlers planted that tree there so there'd be peace between us. The war axe is buried there. Just a good place, that's all. So uh, you're cooking up medicine, Indian medicine. Well, just how much pepper would you be needing? How much can we have? Very, very little. Hold out your hands. How's that? Thanks, Ma. <laughs> Remember a group of Highlanders led by a man named Roderick McIntosh? Yes. 
Twelve men and a small boy. They came through Boonesboro a few weeks ago, heading north. Well, they didn't go north. They're cutting timber to build cabins on Deerhorn Flat. Deerhorn Flat? And Roderick McIntosh says it's empty land, waiting to be claimed. Well, when did you talk to him? Manet was sent three of us to tell him and his people to get off our land. We were ordered off Deerhorn Flat, and one of our messengers tried to put an arrow into McIntosh's back. Stubborn fools. I might have known they wouldn't take my advice. You know, they must think... Oh, we know what they think. He told us. We're savages, and we tread on Deerhorn Flat at our own risk. Well, somebody'd better tell McIntosh he stuck his head in the hornet's nest. It's worse than that, Daniel. Manewa is a very angry man. He doesn't like fools who think they can blunder in where they have no right to be and grab whatever they want. Well, can't blame him. If they would listen, we could explain the laws and the terms of the treaty. Many of our Cherokee think there's been too much talk already. Taffend and Pushtar and a half dozen of the others are sharpening their war arrows. And they want to use them. Well, it's a nice day for a walk. Medicine. Sure don't smell very good. Pitta Puri, the medicine man, said it's the most important. If we want to grow and run swiftly, we have to rub it on all over us. What's in it? I don't know all of it. Deer horn, bear and beaver fat, a frog skin, salt from... Ma, give me some pepper. Pepper? Nah, that's a ladybug. Pounded deer horn cooked and rubbed on legs makes you run fast and jump high. Bear fat makes very strong. What does pepper do? <laughs> oh well, I guess we really didn't need pepper. Are we ready to start cooking now? Pitta Pony said we need more. Only we can find it. He can't give. What do we need? Hair from a rabbit to make us jump high. Hair from a skunk to make our nose smell. Hair from a fox to make us wise. Eyes from a frog to make us see underwater. Stingy nettle to make our skins hard against arrows. Is that all? That's all. Thank you. 
Don't stoop out to the left, man. Ah, oh, Nance is nothing to worry about. If it was on the end of your nose, you'd worry about it. The one thing I can't abide is a tree in my orchard that's out of line. Aye, an inch to the left it is. Grandfather, look! Somebody's coming! Why, it's Mr. Boone. Come on, lad. Mr. Boone? Mr. McIntosh? This is my grandson, Dougal McIntosh. He was my lookout. He thought you might be a savage. We've been threatened by savages. Well, now, I've heard about that. If you come to offer help, we'll take it gladly. I think the savages outnumber us a hundred or more. Well, now, they're not savages, Mr. McIntosh. They're Cherokees. And they outnumber you by far more than a hundred. And how are you going to help us, Mr. Boone? Well, yes, in a manner of speaking, but... Probably not in the way you expect. What do you mean by that? Well, the last time we talked, I might not have made myself clear. But it's really quite simple. This valley, it's just not another piece of ground. It's most likely the most important land the Cherokee own. Now, the game, the deer, and the elk herds all come right across here to that pass up above. They go up in the spring and they come down before the first snowfall. Permanent type settlements such as you plan here could drive the game away. And that would cause a terrible hardship on the Cherokee, possibly even starvation, Mr. McIntosh. People shouldn't live only by hunting. They should plow and sow and reap. Well, now the Indians have been living this way for thousands of years. We can't expect them to change overnight. I'm a man who understands hardship. We suffered enough of it coming this far. Aye, and some of us died on the way. But we came at last to this ground, and this is the ground we want. We must be settled in, our cabins built, our planting done before winter comes. There's little enough time if we stay here. There's none if we move on. Well, just what is it you're going to be planting? Apples. McIntosh apples, the best in the world. We're orchard men. We grow many things, but we're orchard men first of all. Take them home with you, Mr. Boone. A gift from Roderick McIntosh. The young and will appreciate it. Thank you. If we live, there'll be many more. So you plan to stay on? Aye, we'll stay and we'll fight the Indians if we have to. Did you ever see an Indian war, Mr. McIntosh? Well, no. Well, I have. And I don't want to see another one if I can help it. This land belongs to the Indians. And you're not welcome. I take it that's your last word, Mr. Boone. Not my last word, Mr. McIntosh. The Cherokee. Awa! Ula! Ula! Awa! Ula! Ula! Aga! Ula! Ula! Awa! Ula! Ula! Aga! Awa! Awa! Ula! Aga! Aga! Ula! 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 I'm tired. Ain't that enough? Ula, ula, awa. Ula, ula, aga. Ula, ula, awa. Ula, ula, awa. Enough. I should think so. Think it's ready? I'll see. Come on, let's take it off. Till it cools off now. Yeah. <sighs> 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 
Let's throw it off guard. You're wearing a dress. It's kilts I'm wearing, and it's a man's way of dressing, not a woman's. Stand up to me and I'll prove it. No, no, you've proved it enough already. What's your name? Dougal McIntosh. What's yours? Is you Boone? You're one of the new people that moved up in the valley. That's right. Is he a savage? I am Manutha, son of Manewa, chief of the Cherokee. Why have you smeared your faces? They're not smeared, they're painted. We're making medicine. Oh, I'm sorry you're sick. Not that kind of medicine. Come on, we'll show you. Engine medicine works magic if it's strong enough. Strong it is. Only strong medicine is good. What's in it is the secret. The Cherokee medicine man told us what to use. But we had to promise not to tell anybody. And it works magic. It makes men strong. You rub it on you and it makes you grow. See, you don't have to wait. You start growing right off. I didn't believe it. All right, we'll show you. Come on, Mama Luther. Yeah. Tomorrow, you'll see how much we've grown. You put it on me first, Mon Luther. You own my shirt. It is strong. A buddy can listen no to that. Turn around, Israel. get measured first. These Highlanders are not bad people. They're just cranky and stubborn, and they don't like being told what to do. They must move. Well, I know it. But the trick is getting them to know it. They've come a long way, and they've had hardship, and they see that land as the end of their journey. It is our land. If they not leave, we drive them off. Well, that'd be like driving a bear down a badger hole. You'd get scratched up some. 
we can kill the bear. Well, it's a bear it takes some killing. There'd be many empty Cherokee lodges before you were through. Better to die fighting than to die of hunger. Well, Manewa, I don't want anybody to die for any reason. The Highlanders are my brothers. The Cherokee are my brothers. We can live in peace. They must move. Well, I'll do what I can to get them to move. Will you give me time to reason with them? How much time? Five days. Five days. Five days. Daniel? What is it? I have news. I found the deer herd. Where? At White River, above Three Forks. The deer have come out of the hills early this year, and that bespeaks a hard winter. They'll be at Deerhorn Flat in about three days. It doesn't give me much time to talk sense into those stubborn Highlanders' heads. Now only two days. If the bear does not leave our land, we will drive him off or kill him. What are you doing? What am I doing? Can't you smell it? Yeah, I can smell it. I can smell it a quarter of a mile down the trail. Wind must have been just right. A quarter of a mile? Oh, good heavens. Are you sure it's coming from here? I don't know. I spent the afternoon at Mrs. Bradley's, and when I got home and opened the door, it very nearly knocked me over. I can't find what's closing Becky. it. That smell's not inside. It's outside. Up. They'll do what? Grow, Pa, grow. You mean that stuff is something you put on to make yourselves grow? Sure, Pa. Cherokee medicine. Well, now, you and Mon Luther didn't cook this up yourself, did you? Or maybe you had a little help from Chief Manewa's medicine man. How did you know? Oh, I'm a good guesser. I bet he told you how to make the medicine and gave you everything you needed to do it. Only part. And a part with a peculiar smell. How do you know? Uh, I've known Pitapuni for a long time. He's a sort of man that I could play a good joke on a couple of young'uns. It ain't a joke, Pa. It's real Cherokee medicine. It is real, ain't it, Pa? The medicine's made right, it'll do what you want. Well, a lot of men think so. I guess, if you believe it enough, it might just do the job. Now, let's get that face. <sighs> the 
children are all tucked in for the night. Dan, who is in the right? Uh, Monet was just as stubborn as Macintosh. Neither one of them will give an inch. I suppose it depends on whether you're wearing moccasins or shoes. If you're wearing Monet was moccasins, you know you got to keep Deerhorn Valley clear or have your tribe face a hard winter. And if you're wearing Macintosh's shoes, you know you got to have your people settled in before the snow flies or maybe some of them will die. Which side will the people of Boonesboro be on? Well, I've asked myself that question and got no easy answer. We've been at peace with the Cherokee. Which side are you on, Dan? The Cherokee. I told Macintosh to move. A man has got to stay with what he thinks is right. Macintosh is wrong. I won't stand by and let him endanger the whole settlement. All right, Mom, Musa. Three inches in one night. Wow. It is strong medicine. What I want to know is, why didn't you have to take a bath? Cherokee braids smell like this all the time. <laughs> By golly, you're right. I wish I was a Cherokee. You are a Cherokee's brother. You had to take a bath, too. That I did, not five minutes after I got home. Mon Luther kept his medicine on. He grew this much. I didn't believe it. Show him, Mon Luther. Put his heels on the ground and you'll not be so tall. And you had to smell like a skunk all night for nothing. I came to tell you, I can't come here anymore. My grandfather says they're soon to be fighting with the Indians. It might try. The Braves talk of war, because your tribe is camp where the deer will pass. What if they go away? Peace, like now. See, tell your grandpa to go somewhere else, and then nobody will fight. My grandfather has talked to all the men. He says the land is not the best, but we have done much work on it. We will stay where we are. Then my tribe will fight yours. What about your pa? And the people in Boonesboro, will they fight the Cherokee? Most, most likely. Our tree will be cut down, killed. Yes. What is the tree to do with fighting? It is a peace tree. When the settlers first came here, they and the Cherokee fought. Many scalps, many cabins burned. And then Pa and Mingo and Chief Manewa got it stopped. They smoked the peace pipe. They planted the peace tree. As long as it grows... No scalps, no cabins burned. But this is a war axe. If anybody wants to start fighting, all they got to do is pull up the war axe and chop down the peace tree. If my pa fights your pa, then you and me will have to fight. I guess so. Would you scalp me? I don't know how. I can tell you, if you didn't know how, would you scalp me? Would you kill me? No, you're my friend. Would you? No, sir, not me. I cannot kill you or you. If there is fighting, I will kill myself. No, just because grown-ups can be friends one day and fight the next doesn't mean we have to. What else can we do? I know. We'll make peace medicine. My Luther, you talk to Penapuni and find out what we need. Yes, today. The medicine we rubbed on our legs and back was no good. My grandfather says such things are foolish. My pa says it's different. It ain't just what you put in. You got to believe 
and want and try. And then it is good medicine. Do you want fighting and killing? Or are you going to help? Aye, I'll help. End? Who did the Cherokee fight? The settlers at Bighorn Flats. No, we're at peace. Not for long. My father promised two days. Why? So they can move away. They will not move away. They build forts and make weapons to kill the Cherokee. Father? Ammunition, lad. Ammunition for the protection of our people. As true as a Cherokee arrow. Manewa Macintosh. I don't see why they have to be so stubborn. That's because they believe their lives and the lives of their people depend on it. Edward, I want you to stay close to the cabin. I don't want you to get in any trouble. No, Pa, no trouble. You too, Jemima. All right, Pa. And that will stop everybody from fighting. What weapons did you get that has killed? Sure looks like it has killed people. What did you get? It has only killed chickens. It's killing enough. I got some of Pa's powder and bullets. I guess powder and bullets have been killing people forever. Now, we got something that has killed from both sides. All we got to do is bury them in this hole. Is that what Pinapuni said? Yes, bury them so they cannot kill again. And make a fire on top of them. Are you sure old Pinapuni ain't joshness like he did that growing medicine? Pinapuni makes peace medicine too. He danced and chanted all night. All right, here goes. I sure hope the peace medicine works. It takes believing, Pa says. If you believe in anything hard enough, and work hard enough, 
It's just bound to come true. I hope you're right. Now we gotta build a fire on this spot. Time, Daniel. It's running out. We still have some time left. We also have some hotheads who don't want to wait. Taffin, Pushta, some of the others. You see, Daniel, they're afraid that the Highlanders will use the two days to dig in. And before they dug out, it could mean a great many dead Cherokee. I mean a lot of dead Highlanders, too. I'll be somewhere talking them into leaving. Why don't you come along with me? We'll both talk to them. You think I'd be welcome? No, I expect not. But you might be just the one to show them what they're up against. It's worth a try. Come as friends. Mr. Boone, you're no longer welcome to the Clan Macintosh if you come as a friend of the savage. Clan Macintosh? Then you would be from north of Glasgow and Edinburgh, but no further north than that. A fair country, I'm told, Daniel, although occasionally bitterly cold. But, man, you're a savage. Only half. But I am here as a Cherokee to ask you once again to move so that my people need not die. We cannot and will not move. If you don't move, you'll likely all be killed. What right have you got to endanger all these men's lives, Mr. McIntosh? The Clan McIntosh never ran from a fight. They'll not start now. Look out! <laughs> Hold your fire! Hold your fire! They're running, lads. We whipped them good. So that's how you Cherokee keep your promises. Taffin, and just a few young braves. And there are bad apples in every barrel, Mr. McIntosh. Even the Cherokee have them. One of those braves is badly wounded, Daniel. I just might do it. One dead man on each side, that's all it takes to start a war. It might be that Mingo and I can head this one off and get you that two-day truce. You better hope we can. I'm going with you. Whatever happens now concerns the clan. I've got a right to be there. Lads, take care of David.
corn. Meat. Full bellies. For Cherokee and Settler. I for everybody. So the orchards will grow. you to stay out of trouble. That's what we were doing, Pa. Making peace medicine. I thought you were safe in camp. I had to help my friends. Well, what kind of medicine is that? Peace medicine. So there would be no fighting or killing. We put in wheat, corn, and apples, but it's gone, spilled. Now, hold on. What did you say about apples? From the peace tree. So our orchards would grow. I see. Tough and tried to chop the peace tree down. Looks worse than it is. I promised you two days of truce. He broke my word, and you are helping him. There's bad apples in every barrel. I've no doubt we've got some too. Well, that's spoken like a couple of men who could get along if they tried real hard. You know, finding the boys here started me thinking. They get along fine. They've even got time to try to help us get along. Peace medicine, Pitapuni told me. Well, something else started me thinking. Apples were in that medicine. Apples from that peace tree. Now, land is the heart of our trouble. Clan Macintosh wants to build cabins and plant orchards in Deerhorn Valley. And drive deer herds away. Yes, but do you remember where we got the peace tree? Yes, on slope below Squaw Mountain. Crabapple thickets up there, lots of them. Side hill country, fine drainage, good orchard land. Now, we both own that, Cherokee and settler alike. If we both give up some, our friends can move up there, build their cabins, and we can keep Deerhorn Valley clear for the herds to pass. Well, if the peace tree is any example, it must be good orchard land, better than Deerhorn Valley. But we can't move. We couldn't be settled in before the winter. 
Well, why don't we do what the boys do? Talk it over, work it out. There must be a hundred men in Boonesboro who can spare a few days to raise a few cabins. And there must be four times that many squaws and braves in your camp, Chief Manewa. Braves aren't much for raising cabins, but they could hunt and fish and feed the rest of us. Even the strongest tree must bend before the wind. I agree. Well, let's get started. Macintosh women have arrived. Roderick sends his regards. Oh, yes. The deer are coming out of the high country and moving through Deerhorn Pass. Fine. You know, I think we ought to find out what it is the boys put in that peace medicine. It certainly is powerful. Well, I can give you some. There was a little left in the bottom of the pot. Israel brought it home. It ought to be around here somewhere. <coughs> Daniel, uh, as I came in, I noticed three little boys stirring something in an iron pot on the other side of the house. No! What are you trying to do? Fly, Pa, fly! He thought it'd be nice to fly, so he made some new medicine with hawk feathers in it. Well, I think we better have a little talk about that. I don't know, Daniel. They're just liable to make it work. Yeah. 